y'all, it's Chimdi. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how I handled slash still handle anxiety at work. This was a requested video in response to me quitting my job. The person was kind of expressing, do you know just how much anxiety they have around their work situation? And they were just asking how I handled it back when I was still in that situation. And you know, a lot of this stuff related to anxiety at work is not really related to the work, it's related to you and your spirit. And so even if you leave a situation that isn't helpful to you, you can still be bringing some of that with you, which is what I found when I left my role and started doing YouTube more intently I was still having some of those same feelings of anxiety around it that I had to heal and so it's been something that has I've continued to work on you know and I want to share some of the things that I've used and still use as I work on it that's the point of this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already let me know in the comments are you anxious how are you doing what are your methods of getting through it of handling it are you a believer that it's tied to what's going on in your spirit or do you take and or do you take medication for it? Let me know in the comments. All right, let's get into this video. So I made a whole video about how I handle fear as a creative person and I actually in that video talk about some of the different resources, some of the different books that have really helped me with that. And I'm gonna allude to something that I talked about in that video. So when I worked at my last role, I had a weekly call with my manager and it would, I think I had a low grade anxiety the entire time I worked there, but I would really feel it before going into this weekly, literally standing call. Like it was not, it was just a standing like checking with my manager call but I had to create the agenda for the call and in the call we would go through all of my different deliverables and where I was with them it triggered my anxiety because to me it was like a weekly check-in to see should we fire you or not like that's the way I had the call built up in my head was like are you doing your job are you doing your job well enough and if you're not doing your job well enough I will fire you and then you will be on the street homeless there was no gap between being fired and immediately being on the street <laughs> you know even though I had savings even though I have a network of friends and family, even though like I could get another job, none of it. It was like, you get fired, you are on the street, you are impoverished, you are dead. Like full stop, right? So I'm going on this emotional journey every time I'm literally just making an agenda for this weekly call. So the first tip that I would give you if you are struggling with handling anxiety at work is just to actually figure out what your story is. Like what's the story you're telling yourself in this moment about whatever activity it is that you're doing? Is it as extreme as mine? Which I don't think is that extreme. I think that's kind of like the normal story is that we believe that without our jobs, we would be on the street and then killed. <laughs> As a woman, I'm assuming being on the street would then lead to my murder. So either way, I'm dying, basically. It's a grim story, to be clear. But yeah, that's the first step, is understand what story are you telling yourself about creating an agenda? About a weekly call with the manager? Is it as insane <laughs> as that one is? I'm just thinking if you really have a story that that's insane, I don't want to be calling you insane. But that was that was my story and it is insane, you know? But yeah, figure out what that story is for yourself because that's the first step is to realize what wild shit you're telling yourself, right? And the next thing is to actually go through the scenario as a adult, right? Because so often when we're in these feelings of anxiety and stress, that's very much our adaptive children who are our traumatized. Like we're, those are the, the parts of us that are trying to cope with the trauma and the stress of being alive, basically, and the overwhelm that person's like, all right, what are we gonna do? We got to make this happen, blah, blah, blah. So actually go through the scenario as an adult and realize what would really happen if this call doesn't go well, if this agenda doesn't get made, if this presentation you're working on isn't successful, if you don't meet your QRIs, quarterly impact reports. What's the one? K key performance metrics, KPIs. If you don't meet your KPIs, whatever it is, like what would actually happen? Not what, like go through the worst case scenario and then go through like what will actually happen and bring yourself back and realize like, oh, you'll be fine. Like no matter what happens, you're gonna be fine. That was, that's how it was for me, was realizing like, yeah, girl, you're gonna be fine. You can get another job. You can sleep on a friend's couch. You can sleep on a sister's couch. Like, you'll be okay, regardless. The third tip is to actually bring yourself back to the present moment. So very often anxiety is coming from a place of overthinking about either the past or the future. And really thinking that the past terrible thing that we experience is going to happen again in the future. So often we are actually living in the past because we are living in the stories we've told ourselves about the past. And because we've done so much energy thinking about these things that already happened we're basically calling them into our life again and that's why if you found yourself having the same relationship problems again and again being in the same work situation again and again being in the same family situation again and again it could be because you spend a lot of energy thinking about how things used to be or how things happened last time which is unconsciously calling it into this present moment if you're feeling very anxious bring yourself back to what's happening in this moment because actually we have no idea what the future holds and as someone who human beings 
things in general, we like to have control. You know, it's scary to think about the fact that tomorrow, a bomb, that's my kind of current fear is like that I'll just get bombed, you know, that there'll be some kind of terrorist attack and we'll just get bombed, you know, and I'll have to be like a refugee or some shit. That seems like it'd be a real nightmare. But you know, a whole pandemic, like part of the reason why I think certain people, and we don't need to get into this in the comment section unless you wanna like get into it from a place of compassion. But I think part of the reason why so many people don't believe COVID is real is because of how scary it is. Like it's genuinely so terrifying to consider the implications of a virus coming into the world, killing millions of people, it being like this silent virus that you don't even know if you have it or not. You don't really know how to protect yourself. I think it's so genuinely terrifying that people are like, conspiracy, uh, government plan, made up, it doesn't exist because it's literally too much to handle, you know? And I get that because scary shit is scary. So I fully understand like not being able to sit with the idea of that many people being dead right now and that much harm in the world and all the like the government's response. It's a lot. So I, I totally understand why it would be easier to just believe that. I know as much as the next person, right? So it could genuinely be, it could be, who knows? Maybe it really is a conspiracy, right? But I think often fear is such a huge motivator in what people do. And so whenever people are like very staunchly opposed to those kinds of things, I wonder to what extent a lot of their world is a fear world, is a lot of like me against the world. You, you know, just like, I wonder, how, I wonder how much it relates to other stuff going on in their spirit. And that's why I try not to really like get into it with people because I'm like there's probably a deeper trauma that you may or may not be able to access and if you aren't ready to access it then you're not ready and that's okay right like you heal when you're supposed to heal so yeah I would bring yourself back to the present moment because actually we really don't know what's gonna happen and if you're caught up in the anxiety of the bad thing that happened last time you're not even allowing yourself to realize that some really dope cool amazing stuff could happen and is waiting to happen if you are interested in allowing it into your reality right bring yourself back to this moment which is the only moment we ever have that is incredibly a literally once in a lifetime like every single moment we have is in fact a once in a lifetime moment which is amazing and cool and wild right you are actually in control because you can decide how you show up in this moment which will then determine the course of the rest of your life the next tip i have is actually something that I read about from TikTok, which is this idea of when you are procrastinating, you should just sit yourself down in the middle of the room and just have to sit there doing nothing <laughs> until you're ready to get back to work. Because we know that when we procrastinate, it's obviously related to anxiety and stress and these things. And these stories most likely we're telling ourselves about this work that we're doing. And when you remove yourself from the situation, you are able to literally just kind of calm your mind down. It really is a meditation. You're just like calming your mind down and you're allowing these stories to kind of like, you know, just kind of scoot away and then you're able to actually kind of move forward in the work that you're doing and we know that procrastination then makes us feel even worse about the thing because now we add to the list that we don't have enough time to do it or we like we shouldn't have procrastinated about it so it can be this like downward spiral so that is a tip I haven't personally tried it but it's on my list of things to try which is just to sort of sit there and just like allow myself to not do the thing because that's the thing you're not doing it anyway so at least this way you're making a conscious choice to not do the thing versus procrastinating and doing something else in instead of the thing that you believe you should be doing. If you've tried this, let me know in the comments if it works, but it's just something I'm sharing with you as a tip that I heard. And the final piece of advice is to actually just decide whether or not all this anxiety is worth it. Terry Real, who is a relationship therapist, he talks about when folks are in a relationship that meets some of their needs, but not all of it, how they should know whether or not to stay or to go. And he says, you need to ask yourself if you are willing to mourn the things that you're not getting in the relationship, given the things that you are getting in the relationship. So if the things that you are getting are so great that you're okay with mourning the things that you aren't going to get and you are accepting the fact that, yep, I'm just going to live my entire life in this relationship and never get these things. And you're okay with mourning that and accepting that, you should stay. But if the scope, the scale, you know, of how much you're not getting and how much suffering and pain that brings you to not be getting those things, if that overwhelms what you are getting, then that might be a sign for you to go. If you are at work and some of it is your stuff, but a lot of it is the work itself that 
what you know is bringing all this suffering and struggle and pain into your life, I think then it really is a matter of you doing your healing work so that you understand that you do deserve to have a job that you feel good doing, that is aligned to your values, where you are respected, where you are paid appropriately. And as you sort of heal to the point of realizing that that's what you deserve, you know, you're then going to find yourself naturally leaving that role because you'll realize that more is out there and better is out there, you know? But if you find that actually it's, it's a lot of it is your internal work. And as you kind of heal around these different forms of anxiety, you actually find yourself enjoying the work more and really liking it there. And you find all these great things and you find that it starts to feed you and you probably get raises and promotions as a result of how more engaged you are and how, you know, all these things around the work, then boom, then you know that the key is to stay. Just think about whether or not it's actually worth it to continue to deal with it because there's only so much you can do on your end. But if fundamentally you're not supposed to be there, that means there's some dope stuff you're supposed to be doing that's going to help you so much and help the world so much. And you're keeping all of us from experiencing all the greatness you would be bringing if you were in the role you were supposed to be in. And so if that's the case, then you got to get on out of there. You gotta get on out of there, all right? I hope this has been helpful. Those are all of my tips. Let me know in the comments if this resonated with you. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to see more. Let me know what are your tips? How are you doing with anxiety? Have you, I mean, I know y'all have quit some jobs. <laughs> I know a lot of y'all are here because y'all was like, I gotta get out of that job. But let me know if you have since been able to find things that really did align with your spirit and affirmed your belief that yeah, you deserve a job that you wanna be working at. You shouldn't be crying in your car. Come on now. All right, bye.